Ha, Chrissa in Kusana Thank you. Hello. Hello. Chrissa is a Sabbath me as you. Can hope your team enjoy your fun. Hi everybody, welcome to today's service. It's really good to have you with us. We're back in another lockdown. Um, this is not what we expected. This is not what we wanted of 2021. And yet here we are again. But the call is to us all to try and make the best and the most of it in the midst of uh, the pressure of it all. Just to introduce the concept of these services, uh, obviously most of you will know that our churches in our mission area are closed at least until the end of this month. Uh, and we'll be reviewing that at the start of February. It was the right and safe decision to make given the circumstances we find ourselves in. And so as a missionary, we put together a program of online services to try and keep us all going throughout this period. And we felt there was a real need for something that was uh, more contemporary, although I don't really like that word, but something that was slightly different to what we might normally be used to. Uh, some of the songs we use in our, these services probably will be new to you, um, but please enjoy them and join in where you can. The words where we've got them will be bilingual. Uh, each week we're going to interview someone local. Uh, we're really privileged this week to have Janet Finch Saunders, our local member of the Senate, uh, speaking to us and just sharing something of her passion for her work and how we could pray for her and for the local community. But we're planning to interview uh, business owners, other people who are key in our community over the next few weeks to bring a focus to our prayers. There'll be a Bible reading and a short reflection. Um, but we really hope that these services will just uh, give you a chance just to take stock, to rest and to reflect and just to bring your focus to God and what he might be calling you uh, to do and to refresh you in your faith. I'm just going to read a few short verses from Habakkuk uh, before Gwilym prays for us and we sing our first song together, which Catherine is going to be leading us in. These are verses at the end of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, where Habakkuk's been on this journey of, of not really understanding what God is doing in, in the midst of uh, the crisis that he sees around him. And after this dialogue with God, he comes to this uh, wonderful, wonderful moment at the end where he professes his faith. Um, and my prayer for us is that each one of us will find a reason to rejoice in the Lord through our worship today. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my saviour. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. So let's pray before Catherine leads us in our first song together. Father God, thank you for everything in this, everybody in this world. And God always looking after us, even though we're in the dark or in a tunnel or anywhere, or on a train or a bus or on a boat god is always with you to look after you and keep you safe amen amen so bless us lord as we worship you today
I mentioned at the beginning of the service that we were going to have interviews in these services each week and the first one this week as I mentioned is with Janet Finch Saunders our local member of the Senate and we had a wonderful time chatting with her about her role and her passion for what she does and also the ways in which we can pray for our community and and her concerns and also her encouragements over the last year so uh, let's listen to that interview now and and when we've listened to that we'll come back together and pray for the things that she's mentioned wonderful it's a, a great privilege to be joined by uh, janet today who is our local member of the senf um for our constituency in Abercombe. and um, we're really grateful janet that you've agreed just to have a chat with us today about sort of how uh, lockdown restrictions, coronavirus has affected your work and, and particularly how we can support and, and pray for you and all that you do. Um, so thank you so much for being willing to be interviewed. Um, firstly, I suppose, it, for me anyway, it's really hard to conceive why anyone would want to be in politics, especially given recent events. You know, what we've seen in America this last week has been just crazy. Um, the scrutiny and pressure you must be under constantly um, so what brought you into politics? What, what are you passionate about? Why do you do what you do? Well, I originate from a small business background. Uh, my father had been um, a councillor on uh, Abercombe Council, Clandidna Town Council and Gwyneth County Council. He was the only English Conservative on Gwyneth County Council for two terms. Uh, English speaking uh, councillor. Um, my mum got involved in politics because... I suppose, really, the one thing about being an elected member, you can literally, you become a conduit for people who are having issues. They sometimes don't know who to contact, who to communicate with, you know, various uh, public bodies and different organisations. And right from my days when I was reluctant to stand as a town councillor because we're so busy in business, so in the end, I conceded and I absolutely loved it because, you know, if somebody came in with an issue, I could get hold of the county council. I remember one lady, a tree had fallen down in, in her path outside her house and she was distraught. And she came in to see me in my business and she said, um, oh, you know, I'm not sleeping. I've been trying to contact people. So I rang the council. They came that very afternoon and moved the tree. So the, it, this was a Friday. On the Monday, she came running into my office. You got my tree removed. You moved my tree. And I'm thinking, I didn't move your tree, but I was able to go to the right people. And so I find myself really as a link. Yeah. And um, so my constituency work in my office is in normal times, pre-COVID, is very busy that people pop in for a cup of tea and a chat and or, you know, if they've got an issue and it can be anything from a street light that keeps flashing or has gone out or to something more serious whereby perhaps they've been left behind on a list, wait, hospital waiting list and they're in pain. So we get involved, I have a fantastic team we get involved. Now, you asked me the question, why did I get in? As I say, I was quite reluctant at first, but I really enjoyed my 17 years. I was on Clandidna Town Council and loved it. And then when I was asked to stand for the County Council, um, I was elected in Craig Adon, and I went straight into Cabinet. And so it was really nice to be involved in making some of the really important decisions affecting our community. And then, of course, when the, uh, in, in 99, when, you know, the National Assembly for Wales um, came about and, and devolution, um, I was a little bit sceptic. I'm a very keen unionist. And I thought, well, there's little point me moaning from the sidelines if I want to be able to look after, you know, sort of people in, 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 in my community and work with them and carry on the work that I'm really enjoying. It's, you know, so when they asked me to stand, uh, and we'd never won um, uh, for our party this seat in Abercombe before. So I'm the first person ever to win it. And then it, it's usually changed hands at every election. And thankfully, I was able to hold the seat next uh, last time. And I'd love to do it again um, in May of this year because it's just so rewarding being able on the constituency side. It's so rewarding for somebody to come. And we get people that come to us quite distressed, very worried, very anxious. Um, and so, yeah, I just find it's a really rewarding work. And then it's very interesting when I'm down in Cardiff, the other aspect to my role 
and that is more scrutiny and challenge, challenging the Welsh Government and other public bodies where perhaps they're not exactly adhering or I feel that um, they need to, we, we need to be just reminding them where the legislation lies and how, you know, they're dealing with it. And no more so than the COVID. I think I've been in post now nearly 10 years and I have to say this last tw uh, nearly 12 months have been the most challenging, the most interesting and the most uncertain. I think that leads us really well, doesn't it, into kind of the sort of next question really was that, you know, so much has changed over the last year um, and is ever changing. Um, so, so what's concerned you most, but, but also what's encouraged you most over the last year? The way the community, the people in the community have come together, even though a lot of the um, sort of um, diktats and guidance and everything and all what you can and can't do has come from Cardiff Bay, and the Welsh Government. Um, and really, to be fair, our local authorities have been fantastic at handling the business grants, the support for those people shielding. Um, the members of the community have stepped up as volunteers, even now with the vaccinations. I've got people of all ages wanting to volunteer to, you know, regardless of any risks that, you know, or, or potential risks to themselves, wanting to step up and actually become part, involved in a, a volunteer scheme. So for me, the, the, the heartening things have been the way the local community have reacted and, you know, all our emergency services and things. Um, but the frustrations for me also are that we are a constituency that's founded on people being involved in community groups, being involved in our churches and, that has been their life and to suddenly have that taken away from them. I am very, very worried about mental health issues and social isolation. Very, very worried. Yeah, which probably leads us really well on to sort of the last question, really. Yeah. So with all that thinking about what's happened last year and obviously the um, going ahead into the unknown, I suppose, still, how can we be praying for you personally, um, for the constituency and um, for the Senev as well? Well, I would ask, really, for you to pray for all my constituents first. Obviously, it's nice if you include me, um, because I just feel, feel, feel very, very concerned. Um, you know, because I'm involved in politics and, if you like, closer to government in terms of the work that I do, you know, we, we get the rationale all the time. There's been a little bit of doubt recently um, about as to why these lockdowns come. So we've been challenging those. But to somebody who's not that involved, it must be really difficult. So I really do value and wish to thank you for the work you do in our community. And, you know, really, when you're asking me how my life has changed as a result of COVID and the work I do, as we spoke about earlier, yours has. And just thank you for all what you do. But um, yeah, and even though, you know, we have different political sort of um, factions within the Senate, I would ask if you would pray for all the members, because it doesn't matter which political party we're in, whether you're in government, whether you're in opposition, we're all, we're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's been, I think, um, I spoke with the minister yesterday, there's, there's a camaraderie there now, that in normal times when things are easy, sometimes it's easier to be a little bit partisan. But I am finding in the main that we're all working together collectively, responsibly, and a little bit more together. Yeah, good. Uh, well, let's pray that continues, that there'd be a greater unity and that we yeah. do the good and betterment of our communities and our nation. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Well, we will be praying for you, Janet, and for the constituency, and, and we really hope and pray most of all that the vaccination rolls out and that it's the effective yeah. treatment that we need uh, to get us back to some form of normality. Um, yeah. Thank you so much once again for chatting with us, and uh, we wish Aww. you for the future and uh, whatever happens in May as well. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck to you both in the future and to keep in touch. Wonderful. Let's pray together. Gwethion. 
Eo da, diolch yn i ti, um, dy fod ti mor ffyddlon. Diolch yn dy fod ti yna iddyn ni um, trwy gydol unrhyw beth yn ein gwynebu yn ein bywydau. Diolch y dad am Janet ac am popeth ydym wedi clywed gan ddi hi heddiw. Uh, diolch um, gymaint am y gwaith mae hi'n ei wneud yn yr ardal yma. Dyn ni'n gweithio dy fy'n ddithion ddi dros dy hi um, ac y fyddi ddi yn edrych ar ei hol hi. Diolch yn hefyd am yr stori ydyn ni'n clywed am pobl yn y cymuned um, sydd yn dod ati gilydd i helpu um, pobl eraill, pobl sydd um, mewn angen um, neu'n strygla yn ystod yr amser yma. Help yn ei gyd i peidio um, dim ond meddwl am ein hunan, ond i edrych am ffyrdd o gallu helpu pobl yn ein cymuned. Um, ie, yeah. a byn ddithio ni gyd o dad, yn enw Iesu Grist. Amen. Amen. Father God, thank you about Janet and everything Janet's done for us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Lord, we thank you so much for Janet and for people like her who serve in uh, our political arena. Lord, we recognise the scrutiny and the pressure that they're under constantly. And Lord, we, we pray that they would be people of integrity and you would strengthen them, Lord, for all that lies ahead, all the challenges that lie ahead. Lord, we thank you for Janet's testimony of the unity of uh, the Senate and the members there. Lord, we pray that would continue to be the case and would only ever grow and strengthen Lord, that all of the members there, despite uh, the colour or the party, Lord, that they serve or represent, Lord, would be united in doing what is right and what is good for the people that they serve. And Lord, we do pray for our own community here. Lord, we do pray for an end to this virus. Lord, that is what we all want. Lord, we thank you for this vaccination. Lord, we pray that you would uh, enable its rollout, Lord, that you would look over all the logistics of uh, the vaccination programme and Lord, as many people as is possible could be vaccinated as soon as is possible. Lord, we pray for our young people, for our children, Lord, who aren't attending school at the moment. Lord, would you be with them and help and support them for all their parents at home trying to homeschool, Lord. Give them strength, we pray. Lord, for everybody affected in whatever way by this virus, Lord, would you help us to support the most vulnerable around us? And Lord, may our communities be stronger as a result of all that has happened, Lord. May we uh, come out of this a better, stronger and more united group of people. Lord, would you bring good out of what isn't in the way that only you can? So, Lord, we commit all that we've talked about this morning to you and pray your blessing upon us, our churches, our communities and our homes. Amen. Amen. Eleanor is now going to read our Bible passage for today, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9, after which I'm going to offer just a brief reflection on that passage. Uh, so let's enjoy uh, this Bible reading uh, and let's consider what it might have to say to us today. The Bible reading is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. The call of Abram. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. And they arrived there. Abram travelled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moray at Shechem. At the time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So Abram, he built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. From there, he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. 
There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. The theme for this week's service is simply into the unknown. How many of you have the frozen song stuck in your head as I say those words? But the reality of life at the moment is that we seem to be walking into a new unknown every day. Something seems to change beyond our control and we're stuck just not knowing quite how to respond and to react, struggling sometimes to stay upright and to keep moving forward, to stay positive and to stay hopeful. And it's difficult when we come with our toolbox of faith to know quite how we cope with everything that's happening at the moment. And we we're all hoping and praying that 2021, the new year, would mark a new uh, impetus in hope and expectation for us all. And yet we seem to have started this new year and gone straight onto the back foot again. It just seems to be an extension of 2020, as it may seem in many of our hearts and minds. And yet as we read passages like our scripture reading this today of Genesis chapter 12, we see that we are not the only ones to be called to step into the unknown. In fact, scripture from start to finish is, is God calling his people to walk in faith beyond their understanding. Here we encounter Abram being called to leave all that he's known, all that is comfortable, all that is his, and to walk into a complete unknown, to journey to a new land, to start this amazing adventure and journey with God, to believe that God could do the impossible, to believe that God could achieve things that were beyond Abraham's understanding. Now, many of us, the irony is that we can't go on a physical journey anywhere at the moment. So in that sense, we're not journeying into the unknown as Abraham is, but in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits, we are being called into the unknown. How can we have the faith to trust God as Abraham did? How can we have the faith to leave and to let go of all that we know and trust that God has something better for us in the future? How can we walk forward as Abraham did with hope and expectation? Now, as a disclaimer here, we've got to remind ourselves that Abraham didn't walk the rest of his faith journey without wobbles. There were several times when he got things wrong, when he took things into his own hands, when he struggled to believe that God was for him, when he struggled to believe that God could fulfill the promises that he had made to him. But he was a man of great faith and is commended as such in the New Testament. See, for me, the, the clincher in all of this is, is, yes, the unknown is scary at times. But with God, even though things may still be unknown and uncertain, they are always secure. You see, what Abraham knew, even when he was called to do uh, the most difficult of tasks, he knew that even though he was uncertain of what was coming, he was secure in God. He knew even with all of the unknowns, even without any understanding, he knew God would come through in some way, shape or form. You know, there is so many times in my few short years where I've been called by God to step into an unknown. Called by God to lay aside what has been in the past, to lay aside my own wants, desires and expectations and to walk into something new and scary. You see, the call to me in that moment, the call to Abraham in this moment, the call to so many people in the scriptures from start to finish was simply this. Trust me and do not be afraid. And there's the clincher. Do not fear. You know, as I've looked back on 2020, it's, at times it's been hard to grasp any form of positive from that and as I was going through my phone just this morning, it came up with this review of 2020. And, and I want to show you this video because for me, this is a, a real moment for me. And I want to share that with you. Hola. 
every day. That's my thing. At two, three minutes walk from the seaside. Being able just to keep going to not reveal our weakness. Yeah. Was you good? Yes. As I watched the very same video that you've just watched, I was uh, brought to tears. As I saw, there were so many positives. And even as I look back on the pain of the year that's been, I can also look back on the faithfulness of God throughout that year. The God who did give me all that I needed to get my master's assignments completed. The God that has sustained us as a family, that has uh, facilitated uh, our move to Degamwe. The God who has led me to ordination uh, and the God who is leading us even now. See, when I look back in the midst of the pain, there is all I need to believe and to not fear. Abraham was willing to step out and to walk in faith beyond his understanding. None of us understands what is going on now. Nobody understands why this is happening. Nobody fully knows when the end will be and what the end will look like and what normal, whatever that is, even that concept has gone completely will be when all of this finishes. But even though things are uncertain, even though things are unknown, we are called to walk in faith, to not be fearful, because God is with us. And in that glorious truth, we know we are always secure in him. We may not understand. We may wobble at times but God's goodness is never in doubt. So let's be a people that walk by faith and not by sight. As we draw our service today to a close, we're gonna to listen to a brilliant song that's been recorded by uh, Sold Out uh, and performed beautifully uh, by two wonderful musicians. And that chorus is exactly what we've just been talking about. Do not fear. God is faithful and in our own lives in the lives of the church in in the reading of scripture we know that God has proved himself to be faithful so as we listen to this song may it wash over each one of us and may it remind us that God is good and his love endures forever and may we too have the faith of Abraham to walk physically we hope one day spiritually emotionally uh, into the unknown knowing that God's call is the only thing that truly matters. Amen. Fort, 
大好きな意味も。We really hope and pray that you've enjoyed the service this morning um, or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you've watched this. And we really hope that you've been encouraged and something has spoken to you in the midst of the worship or the Bible reading uh, or the prayers or the interview, whatever it might be. That something has spoken to you and has uplifted you and brought some joy and laughter and fun uh, into your life today. We pray that you would have all that you need Uh, to get through this next week ahead. I want to end with some wonderful words, uh, a Celtic prayer taken from the the St. Patrick's breastplate. Christ as a light, illumine and guide us. Christ as a shield, overshadow us. Christ under us, Christ over us. Christ beside us on our left and our right. 
this day be within and without us, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom we speak, in the mouth of each who speaks to us. This day be within and without us, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside us on our left and our right. Thank you so much for being part of our service today and we really hope to see you all next week. Same time, same place. Take care everybody. God bless. Bye bye.